Okay, we're recording again. That was weird. I don't even remember what I was talking about. So hopefully I'll be able to find the first part of this video and put it together with the second part of this video. Um, oh, Dan, you were just saying, was it, who was saying uh, we to look at, it depends on how we look at this second the apostle. I, I was I was the one saying, well, you know, we can, you know, talk about how we just had an interruption, the most inopportune time, and how we could either all be really mad about it and just go, and people would feel that as it emanated out when they saw the replay, or we could just look at this, laugh at it as being one of those funky, weird, technical glitches that happen sometimes, and we just took it in stride and moved on and continued with what we were talking about because you know one way or the other we have the choice to either let it rattle us or let it just say okay we're back and here we are we're going forward <laughs> you know i was reading a uh, anthony robbins um maybe it was a chapter in awaken the giant within i i can't remember where it was but he was talking about how the words you use can change or change isn't the right word it's um influence the way you feel about a particular situation and um so like when something happens that you don't like or is frustrating or whatever is as a lot of times people will use really extreme words to describe that situation in the midst of it so let's say for instance like your situation sandy when somebody cut you off and you could use the words I was furious and that feels like uh, really 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 mad or you could say oh I was frustrated and it can influence the way you actually feel about that situation because we we put we we attach meaning to words in different ways based on what we you know what those words mean to us and what I started doing after I had read that chapter is anytime I would start to feel in a, I don't know, it, it, anytime I would feel an emotion, an unpleasant emotion, we'll call it an unpleasant emotion because it, it's either A, we have emotions that feel good or we have emotions that feel bad. So anytime I feel an emotion that feels bad, I try and attach words to it that are less unpleasant. Or if I am, getting upset and I want to curse it, for instance it's I I've kind of like adopted curse words that are less less maddening I guess you could say so it's like when I get really mad I'll say son of a popcorn fart and that cra that cracks people up and then it cracks me up and I crack up saying it and so I'll be mad for like a split second but then I'll say that and then I'll feel better about it or I'll say like when our recording you know did its thing instead of saying you know shit or or even worse the f word I, well i did use the f word but it was fart instead of the other one i said fart or sometimes i'll say poop oh poop you know and um and those are like kids words so they don't have the same intensity in my opinion as um some of the adult first words right i guess you could say but um I've noticed that that over time has made a big influence on how I feel about situations. And even when I'm really, really frustrated, um, I will, I'll still try and find words that make it seem not as upset as what I started out being and that causes me to, to feel better or less bad or, <laughs> you know, I don't know, things like that. Um, and it works in other ways, too, because I used to, when winter would come on, I would be like, I'm freezing to death, you know, and I would feel like I was freezing to death. But now I'm like, oh, it's kind of chilly outside, you know, <laughs> and it changes somehow. I don't know, but um, it's just a thought I had when we were having this conversation. But it's interesting you say that because I myself, when I was, was I have my adopted words, but they're made up words. They're just words I made up to, you know. And uh, people have learned over time that usually when I when I go, oh, razzle, battle tat, and that's my word for <laughs> it's because people just look at me kind of like, what, <laughs> you know? And then I say, oh, well, I'm just a, a swearing without swearing, and then they kind of laugh at me, and it kind of changes. 
but it, it is another way of rippling an effect to where, you know, people don't know what you, you know, unless you explain it to them, they really don't know what you, what's going on with you. But then you're still putting out maybe a semi-positive thought or feeling rather than when you say, oh, you know, and people just, and then it kind of puts that air out there that, you know, kind of puts everybody else on guard. It's like, are you, are they mad at, are you mad at me? Are you, you know, this, that, what, you know, is that, th you know, thrown at me? So then p other people kind of get on guard. So again, that's a, I think it goes back to that ripple effect of how you address things and deal with things and how it can just in an instant change the situation from, you know, being up here and vibrations way up here, um, as Sandy would say and stuff like that, or, low ones that are way down here that everybody else can feel plus i think also when we were going through the book what what do you say to yourself when you talk to yourself you know that too you know has the effect you know so by changing how we associate words i think that also helps us in keeping in that positive vibration and the slight edge principle of constantly moving forward in the positive so we can keep putting that positive feeling and thoughts out there so other people can pick up on that and we can be positive influence there. Yeah, I love Sandy when you mentioned earlier about when you got went into that meeting and the guy said that you were a ray of sunshine and I, I so agree with that. Um, but one thing that kind of came up for me is I notice in my, you know, at my work when I'm, you know, around people is they will come to me with these comments of, you're always so positive. I never see you upset. I, you know, and it'll be things like things along that lines. And it, um, it strikes me because I don't really think about it that way. I'm just like going, I don't know. I guess sometimes I try and go in with the attitude of just being the ray of sunshine that brightens people's life. I guess that's more of like a, a philosophy versus an attitude of every day. But it, I, I kind of take that every time somebody makes a comment like that, I realize how I am impacting those people. And that if some people are thinking that, then other people are just experiencing it. And maybe they don't even see, they don't even articulate it in their own minds. They just don't, you know, they just are impacted. And um, what was really interesting is I didn't even realize how much of an impact I can make on people without even trying. And uh, but I had this one person at my work the other day. She told me, and she doesn't even work in my department. I don't work directly with her. I just kind of um, see her in passing as I'm going about my day. And um, she told me the other day that she had had a dream and I was in her dream. And in dream she had it was something to the effect of um i was like really 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 angry i was like super mad and she was like it was the craziest dream because you're never mad you're never angry you're like the most calm person here <laughs> you know and and i was like that's interesting that you know and i've had dreams before where co-workers have been in there you know in my dream in one way or another and um and i don't know maybe we all have had that we that were that are in our lives on a regular basis that we you know they've come up in our dreams right and it it just struck me particularly after reading this chapter I was like huh you know we I think we have a much larger influence on people than what we even we even realize and even in the in just passing and um I don't know it's something to really think about you know i mean if, if that if i can impact this person so much and i'm just like coming up in her subconscious for some reason then that's a huge thing to be aware of in, in my opinion that we need to really you know, we need to pay attention to if we care you know i mean if we care about how we're impacting other people in our lives then i think we need to be aware of that you know, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Sandy. Go ahead. Um, as you were talking, I, I realized that I've been doing a lot of rem room, <laughs> ruminating. 
<laughs> ruminating. Ruminating. That's a good word. I think I'll put that into my vocabulary. <laughs> um, over a visit to my physician's assistant who writes the prescriptions for me, and I, I see him once every three months. And prior to him, I had seen this woman for quite a few years that uh, that I'd actually moved clinics for because, and, and so did a lot of other people because it was so wonderful to see her. Now this man is a really nice man. He, he's a very, very nice man. I'm gonna put that across. Um, but I have noticed since I left this last visit with him that I've been thinking of revising myself with him. Um, you know, I, I, I figured since I'm writing a book on bipolar and he treats practically strictly bipolar people, uh, he might have an interest in that, but he might think, well, you know, you know, how many people do I have in my care that are writing a book about this? And, and I had given him the place to go to read it as I write uh, six months ago. And he hasn't gone there. And, um, you know, I, I really thought, well, no big deal. I, I really can't expect him to. I mean, my gosh, these people, you know, they ring themselves out every day. They, and I knew that he was there earlier probably than almost anybody else, and he probably goes home later. And um, I, I think the thing that really bugged me is that I'm carrying on, th I think I'm being really enthusiastic. Like I said, I don't see people really often, and, and I do, I had always seen myself as an extrovert. I don't see myself that I see myself as very mixed now that I've taken that that uh, MMPI or whatever it is, you know, I don't know, probably in my lifetime I've taken it four or five times because I take it each time I come out of an episode at some point to see if I'm like this entire radically different person. And I always end up having the four same four initials, if you know what that is, but... Um, But, but, you know, as I was thinking about our interaction, I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm being really enthusiastic. I'm being really, you know, interested. I'm, I'm asking him questions. I, you know, being 30 years of bipolar, what kind of questions do you need to ask? It's kind of like, I probably know more about it than you do. Um, but at the end, he says, are you in danger? Are you a danger to yourself or others? which is probably, you know, part of his Hippocratical oath. You know, he probably has to ask me, you know, they probably have some damn rule, you know, that if you don't ask, then they cut off your fingertips. I don't know what it is. But, you know, I, I felt like, how could they stop him from saying, you know, you obviously are feeling really good, but I have to ask you this. Or, you know, something other than just kind of like ending the whole thing. I felt treated like, you know, did I seriously come across depressed to you <laughs> or whatever? So anyway, you know, here he is, this nice guy. And, um, you know, he asks, he, he answers my questions. He comes up with something to offer in the way of, you know, a fish oil prescription that should be a better fish oil than others. And, uh, you know, nice guy. And I go away all... Um, a lot of sorts. And I think it's been, I guess, I, I think it's been maybe a week from Monday, you know, so it's like almost two weeks that I've been kind of ruminating over the, or ruminating <laughs> over this whole thing. <laughs> and so, yeah, we do affect people. I mean, I, I'm sure that he would never in a million years anticipate that, you know, that is, the, the people that he writes prescriptions for are out there running around thinking, well, he asked me this question, but anyway, I, it does affect people. Well, I, I, I think I want to just point out that it's not just you. Oh, 
I'm sorry, Sandy. We all want to talk at once today. <laughs> we all, our brains are going. You're, we're all awake. See, Dan, we woke up. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to go off of what Samantha was saying about the impact we make on others sometimes, maybe when we're not even aware of it. And I'm, it got me thinking about different scenarios in my life, like in my office building or in meetings I go to, or even just grocery shopping. Like I know that instantly my mind is making a, a read on whoever's around me, you know, even if it's in the vegetable aisle at the grocery store, like if there's someone next to me and you know, the, it could be subconscious or I'm not even aware of it, but there's an instant thing. And I know that, um, yeah, when I go to the meetings or anywhere, like anywhere, there's a sort of like this scan of the people, you know, <laughs> like who's around me, what's, what's, who's, who, who do I resonate with, who do I not, you know, there's, and it's all like below the surface. It's not like always a conscious thing. So it's interesting to, look at it that way and being almost like everywhere before I leave the house, just get in that mode of like <laughs> being that light, you know? And, um, cause I know when there's moments maybe where I'm so deep in my mind or frustrated or worried about something and I'm out in public, the, what I'm receiving mirrors that. And if I'm going out and as all happy and joyful, like there's just these more like synchronistic happy things popping in on random meetings with cool people. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, it's, it's all energy. And it's really, when you really look at it deeply like that, it's, it's pretty amazing. And um, there was another point I had. Oh, I don't know if this is a little off tangent, but it reminded me of um, one of my friends. She had just gotten back from Colorado to Miami. And she's like, in Colorado, everyone says good morning to each other. Wherever you are, walking, whatever, everybody says good morning to everybody or good afternoon, good evening. So she started doing it in Miami. And, you know, here people just walk around and never say good morning to each other. And it's almost a shock if you say good morning to somebody. They're like, what? So she started doing it and she said, you know, she'd get different responses. Like some people would be shocked, like, okay, or look at her weird. <laughs> but then she had a woman come up to her who looked really upset. She was just walking along and she's like, good morning. And the woman just sort of, she kept walking and then she ran back to her and said, thank you so much. I needed, you know, someone to acknowledge me today and say hi. And um, so I was like, you yeah, know, I'm going to start doing this and, and see if we can create like that kind of community feel here in Miami beach and, uh, start saying good morning to people because I think that, um, you know, that brings that, uh, that ripple effect, um, to people who, you know, may be stuck in their mind about something. Oh, well, nobody cares. And you say good morning. They're like, Oh, somebody said good morning to me and it just changed, brightens their day in an instant. So I'm, I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. I, I commit to that out loud here <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, I see that here a little bit because uh, I've seen a mixture of some people will say good morning <clears throat> or good afternoon. And I know even for me, it kind of like takes me back. It's like, what? Why are you talking to me? But, you know, and then I have to realize it's like, oh, they're just being nice and cordial and friendly. What we once, what society once used to really be, you know, because when I was younger and stuff, my grandparents and stuff, you, I saw it a, a lot more when I was younger and out and about. People were that way. So that's something I think we've lost as a society of that genuine care and caring about other people. And again, a ripple effect. It impacts because I think since that's gone downhill, look at what we are presenting out there and what's being put out there that impacts and we all we all feel it. So we don't really feel like, oh, I want to put that energy out because it'll get squashed, I think. And I think that's why people don't do it as much. I know like for me um, at my church, and I love it because she always makes me feel good when I walk in there and it, you know, and I look forward to it is I, my, my family, we're a bunch of huggers. We hug and we, you know, things like that. And I tend to do that with people I'm really close with or stuff or have a good friendship with. 
um, I can do that. And there's this one lady, she always comes up to me and says, I got to get my hug from you. I got to get my hug from you because you give such good hugs. And I'm like, and you know, and that just lifts me up and then puts a real positive thing in me. So then hopefully that goes back out and emanates back out to other people and they feel it. And I think, you know, <clears throat> and I think going off of what Karen said, I don't think it was just you, Karen, that I think, you know, one, you know, anybody can come off of a somebody saying just a little something to somebody and have it really, you know, Sandy just proved that with the lady that, you know, ran back to her and said, wow, I needed that. You know, I think I've had, you know, there've been a couple times where I've looked at somebody and said, I needed to hear that today because I was kind of, you know, ruminating in my own, <laughs> you know, things and stuff like that, you know? And I think if we want to help be a change, we got to, be intentional in that change too like you Sandy you know, right now saying you're going to be intentional about you know taking the steps to say good morning you know things like that and it's going to take little things like that of just two or three people going out and wherever they're at and doing that but it can have a far-reaching effect I mean how often do we hear of stories where somebody did something that was amazing or different or uh, the littlest thing but the next thing you hear and you hear about somebody way over in another continent being the recipient of a ripple effect of here, somebody doing one little small little thing, but it just germinates and grows and somebody at the other end of the world is the recipient of something big and huge. You know, we hear of those things, you know, periodically. And I think, you know, that's something that I think Jeff Olson kind of hit on that you know we could all really be a force of positivity and rippling out there for other people and in general and i i could i could actually you know picture it in my mind the the massiveness of what what can happen You know, Karen, I'm glad that you brought up your doctor and those questions because I, I'm I'm positive that you're not the only person that has has experienced that and who has kind of had that kind of a feeling. And it really amazes me how many medical professionals there are in the world that just don't have people skills and they aren't aware of what they say mm -hmm. and how it affects people. Because in my opinion, I feel like a positive communication from a doctor would be as much, if not even more of an impact on that patient in a positive healing way than, um, than a lot of what they do. I mean, you know, but just getting it every time I've ever been to the doctor, I always feel like they don't listen and they just throw some blanket, symptom covering thing at you and they aren't really paying attention to what you're personally experiencing they don't credit you for what you know about your own body and that aggravates me more than anything when it comes to doctors i'm like you know i could probably do better not going to the doctor <laughs> just because you you're just gonna put some blanket thing on me you know i i don't know it, it's frustrating and um but I think that it speaks to what we're talking about here is that we don't realize just those little things that we do affect other people in, in massive, massive ways. And uh, it was like last night, <clears throat> I came home and the, my uh, Nika and, and Chris had been working on ordering a pizza, getting pizza delivered from Donato's on Crawfordsville Road over here in Speedway, Indiana, by the way. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, um, they were just really difficult to deal with last night. But apparently, she had called to order this pizza. And the person on the phone had given her a difficult time because they didn't know what the heck they were doing. And, um, and they said, okay, it's going to be about 45 minutes. And two hours later, she's calling going, where's my pizza? And they're acting, they, they had made a mistake. They had gotten the address wrong, the phone number wrong, her name entirely wrong. And they were acting like it was her fault. 
And then when my husband got on the phone and was talking to the manager, he was being a complete mean person to my husband acting like, well, no, we're not going to refund you your money. We're not going to comp you. We're not even going to give you a coupon or discount or anything. And would it cancel the order? And then it's going to be another hour before it gets there. And, um, you know, and finally when the pizza showed up, it was burnt. The cheese cups were all melted and warped out and disgusting. And the breadsticks were all hard. And, and it, it's just, you know, I know that it's, nobody's perfect obviously and but yet just the way that that store handled that whole situation i can't even imagine how they're going to be in business for any amount of time even being such a popular chain up here in indiana and particularly we get on google and there's like hundreds of reviews of people all saying the same freaking thing is that they suck their service sucks blah 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 you know i don't even know why we used them other than the fact that they're the only one that delivers to us for this area and but anyway when i came home and my husband was talking to the delivery driver and chewing his ear off about this whole situation, even though that guy probably, he didn't have anything to do with the whole situation. I, I was like realizing that this one little thing had affected uh, Nika and her feelings that evening. It had affected my husband. It affected the, the delivery driver, which really kind of scares me because then he's out there driving on the road with all of this negative emotional stuff going around him at night in the dark when it may or may not freeze rain you know i mean and um and then of course going back to the store and probably complaining about this customer and then all of the stuff that's going on there at the store and all the negativity that's being put into the food that they're cooking and then that goes out and their attitudes go out and how many people is that one thing affecting a lot you know i mean and that didn't even end now i'm sitting here talking about it it's affecting all of us now so i'm like it's we just don't even realize we just don't realize and and when we can take that that moment to uh, to just kind of plan ahead like like Sandy's saying is just have an intention to say good morning to people with a positive you know a smile on your face and um you know and anytime we interact with somebody uh, it's like at my work in retail, we have a lot of situations where the customers are frustrated or upset because they've ordered something online, they didn't get what they wanted, they didn't, it wasn't what they expected, it was this, it was that, and there's a certain process that you have to go through in order to do the return, and it can be more time consuming, and so the customers get frustrated, and um, and so just us as the people who work at the store just coming in the store with a positive attitude knowing that okay there's going to be frustrated people but we've got to be happy with them we've got to exude a positive happy experience for them um because if we don't if we're if we if we're more negative then we just make the situation worse and we also send that person out with a bad attitude about what's happened and then that person goes out into the world and spreads that unpleasant feelings and um you know, and instead we can do, we can have the exact opposite effect. We take a bad situation, like what we were talking about earlier when the recording decided it wasn't going to be cooperative. And um, we can turn that into a positive experience for everybody else that we come into contact with, you know. And and I think there's so many industries, it's like my, my son, he, he works as a tow truck driver and he drives for AAA. And I know that every time that he goes out there, he's going to encounter somebody who's frustrated in their day because they're broke down. Right. And so if he can come to him with positive attitude and a happy demeanor and be happy about what he's doing, then he can help influence the people who are having a bad day in that moment. And then everything that happens after that for that person I mean, he can influence whether they have a more crappy day or, or where their day improves from this point on. And I think that we all have that potential. And if we are aware of it and we realize that just those little things that we do can, can make a big difference for people, then, then we can influence a large amount of our community and of the world to making it a happier place. Myself. So we're coming up. We're almost at the top of the hour. So if everybody just want to share a final thought before we wrap up, I'll jump out really quick. No, oh, sure. go, Karen. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Uh, I just wanted to mention that 
as Sam was talking about intention, you know, I, I just want to praise her again for this uh, mastermind. How, oh man, how much that influences us all. Um, but I was, I was looking, I, I, I guess I was reading an article about our brain and um, there was a photograph no, no. There was a picture of someone taking uh, a photograph of their baby with their phone. And <clears throat> the comment was, don't take pictures with your phone. Uh, if you want to remember, you know, if you want to have that be in your memory, I mean, of course you want to have your baby in your memory. Uh, you know, the, somebody holding the baby and, you know, all that cute stuff and and uh, the, the comment was that our brain actually picks up on that we are using a device that will take care of keeping that memory for us. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> is that incredible or what? Because our brain does, of course, pick up our, on our intentions. We talk about using intentions all the time. And so if, if our brain can sort out our intentions without us having, I mean, how many of us think, well, my intention is I've got, I've got this picture now I'm not going to have to, you know, I can use my brain for other things, other memories than this one. That just uh, amazes me um, how important it is that intentions become improved. Our, our, it's our intentions that become better and better and better. And I think that's why Sandy said, well, you know, I became a person that I don't I'm, normally am not. Well, I bet maybe, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, she was more often that person that she became because she hadn't been doing the work on herself that she's done to get her to this point today where she realizes I'm not usually that person. Um, so anyway, I'll let you talk to him. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, no, that was a great point that, you know, I think we all have that beginning of where we realize some things in ourselves that we intentionally work on changing. And uh, I love, you know, listening to Sandy when she talks, because she's always just so vibrantly positive and I want to be more like that. I, I love that about, you know, that, you know, because it emanates even through here. It emanates and it can just feel it and sense it. And it's like, oh, you get you get the the best way I can put it is you get those warm, fuzzy things, you know, it's just like, you know, oh, Sandy's going to be on, Samantha's going to be on, you know, the different people and, you know, makes it part of the reason why I'm constantly here, you know, as much as I can because, you know, I get so much what I need for me to help uplift me to keep me moving forward in that part of my journey and stuff like that. But I was going to say, um, you know, we always hear about, you know, where they say, you know, about like talking about retail or service or stuff and things like that. But I think this is general in life that, you know, for every, you know, one good thing that happens, people talk about it a little bit and it only goes to a smaller circle, but anything negative and we're telling the whole freaking world about it because it was a negative, bad experience. How about if we work, you know, if people were to work on, you know, if we could get people to understand that more and then help them realize that let's get put more positive things out there. Let's start uplifting and putting, spreading things about positive things more so it overtakes all the negative things and we can squash the negative out of there to where it becomes a minimal thing like Sandy. You know, when she says, I normally not like this now. And, you know, it's a very rare instance that I get like that. And, you know, if we could turn that around with positive energy and positive things, you know, wow, what a ripple effect that would be on the world and how it could really impact and change the world for the better. Jason, hey, you're out on a boat, huh? Oh, he's frozen. Maybe he'll get back on. You're making me feel bad, Dan, for having said anything about Donato's, and I feel bad. <laughs> I should have just been like, 
It'll be better next time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, but I'm never going there again. So <laughs> go to a different one. <laughs> but isn't that true, though? How we will just so focus on the negative and we want to make sure everybody knows that that happened. This is what happened to me. This is why, or to this group, or to this. But yet, when it's a really good positive thing, yeah, we'll be you know happy and excited about it but we don't actively ex exuberantly share that with the whole world because you know it's it's just i think it's part of our natural nature is just to really feed off the negative rather than feed off the positive it's weird and i know i you know it's like i don't like that and i don't want to be that way and i really want to focus more and more and more on the positive things and pushing cuz a lot of people tell me I tend to, you know, try and uplift people, and I do because I need to be constantly uplifted. I need that in my own. I need that fed back to me because, you know, if I don't, you know, I can be my, in my own mind, my own worst, you know, scenario builder and can build the <laughs> biggest worst thing in the world, you know. But if I can constantly try and put out and uplift other people and do that, um, that's why I think I come here because I get uplifted th this way by all of you guys. And then I can turn around and try and do and keep putting that out there. But I, th it's just sad that, you know, the world is just such a negative influence. And that's where the most energy is put rather than flipping it on its head and putting the most energy into the positive side of things. And, because that's where the real generator is, and that's what really generates growth and trust and moving forward and stuff like that. You know, it's like a car. You know, you can't move a car until you attach the positive in order to start and make it feel the whole circle so it can move forward. Well, why can't we do that with, you know, general stuff and how we react with people and things like that and situations? Me included, I need to so listen to that too. <laughs> I'm so like, oh wow, okay, I need to take that to heart. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Dan. I, yeah, I mean, people thrive off their negative stories a lot of the time, and it just goes on and on. And then the other one says, well, or it's almost like a competition for who has the most negative story. It's like, well, this happened to me, and it's like, oh god. <laughs> Can we uh, change this? And it reminds me of a, a friend who, we, a few months ago, one of my best friends here in Miami, we were both going through relationship issues and we were like, we talk about this, blah, 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 like the negative about what we were experiencing. And then say, she'd go back and then I'd go back. And it was going on for days. Like we were just having this negative like banter about our relationships. And then uh, one day, I think at the same time, we were both like, you know what, let's just stop talking about this, <laughs> all of this stuff in negative. If we're going to have anything to say about it, um, just don't, don't say we already said everything we can about these stories. So let's just drop it and say positive things. <laughs> and we did that and we made an agreement and we may have had needed advice a little bit here and there, but we kept like, we were aware of like, where to cut off okay you got your advice like don't go into the negative and um it we haven't talked in that way since about anything and everything that we've talked about since then is the positive aspects of relationships and you know if we do need help with an aspect okay yeah let's talk about it but if that banter that kept going back and forth of like complain 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 and we're like what are we doing <laughs> like, so yeah it's it's nice to be aware of that and um radiate the positivity and it, it shifts everything in your life when you do that um you know i feel like when we were complaining it sort of had this like ceiling above us feeling like we're like stuck but once we stopped it was like things opened it felt like it opened up for both of us and it reminded me at, a, at the kundalini yoga teacher training i'm doing a girl came up to me and she's like you're always so positive what do you what do you do and so we're sitting on our break for like half an hour and i'm like thinking of like things I've read in books, <laughs> well, this and this and, um, you know, things that I've implemented in my life. And then I'm sort of like, maybe I should write an ebook. And she's like, yeah, write an ebook. <laughs> so maybe I'll tackle that one of these days. Um, I had another point. 
But yeah, I mean, like you were saying, Dan, I think that is a point that's in a lot of self-development book, books is really like that complaining energy or that revamping over and over that negative experience is just creating more of it and um, think of more of the positive things we can share in our life. And it encourages the others to, and, oh, let me look at the positive and see what I can share that's positive rather than comparing our wonderful negative stories over and over. <laughs> But I like your story, Samantha. I think it was important to bring it up. <laughs> now it's done and woohoo. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I like that you bring up relationships and how we tend to, to focus on those things that we're frustrated with. And, and it makes me sit here and think, you know, what if our culture did the exact opposite? You know, we were in a relationship and it fell apart for one reason or another, who knows why. It doesn't really matter. And, um, and then ever after that, we focus all on the positive things that we had in that relationship instead of focusing on all the things that went wrong. Because I feel like if we did that, then we would go into the next relationship with a, a different, um, different glasses on if you if you will for lack of a better euphemism um because it when we go into our relationships with this with all of this negativity from the previous one is then we have we go into it with the fear of those things happening again with anger and frustration from those things happening again so when things similar to that come up in the new relationship we bring all that negativity with us if we were to do the exact opposite wouldn't each relationship be even more amazing and awesome than the previous one? I just, just a thought. I mean, I, you know, and I, I've only, you know, my husband and I have been together for, I don't know, 25 years or something. And, and for a long time we had all of this, I was frustrated and, and upset with him for not being this or not doing that or, being this way or being that way. And, and I realized over a period of time that there were some things that I was dragging from previous things into my relationship, like frustrations and, and resentment and, um, and all of that. And I, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself over the years and, and I've looked at things sometimes and gone, God, I wasted so much time being frustrated and anger and resentful and all of that when I could have just been enjoying what we have, you know, and, you know, I mean, not that everything has been roses and rainbows because it certainly hasn't, but I feel like a lot of what wasn't roses and rainbows was me being all difficult about it or having expectations or dragging crap from previous situations into what we had going on rather than appreciating all of the wonderful stuff that was happening. And, um, I don't know what a different world this would be if we focused on the positive things and yeah, we experienced negative things and that sucked and it was unpleasant, but we had all these awesome things happen too. And that was great and wonderful. Awesome. So, Anyway, Jason, I was glad that you got on here. It's awesome to see you out on a boat. Are you are you with us still or are you frozen again? I think it's frozen. Well, guys, I got to jump off. Bailey's upstairs waking up from her nap, and um, and I got to get going because I got stuff I have to, to get going with anyway. Oh, we're still recording, but anyway. Um, anybody have any final thoughts before we go? I know we kind of did final thoughts already, but. Final final thought. Eric? I can hear you. Yes, no? Okay. All right, guys. Well, have an awesome, amazing, wonderful weekend for those of you who are watching this as a recording. And um, and you can jump in our Facebook group if you just go to mindsetmasterycollective.com. Oh, there's Jason. Now I see you and you're moving. Are you having phone connection issues? Maybe you keep freezing. Can you unmute? Hey, there we go. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Having to do, I'm, I'm having to do some work here, and uh, I guess you, I'm unable to uh, speak to text while the Zoom is running. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other features don't work too. So it's my first time trying to do this. So sorry, didn't mean to be a distraction. Mm -hmm. Great to hear all you, you know, what you guys are saying and everything. Great to be here. 
Awesome. Good afternoon. Great <laughs> <laughs> to be on the Saturday, Saturday morning mastermind. So, as always, <laughs> awesome. Great awesome. topics too. Cool. I like what you're saying there about relationships and and everything. It's, it's important. We gotta we gotta be be help to our partners sometimes. Pull them out of the funk and and help them get. You know, when you see them get when you see them get to get in the in the doldrums or depressed or whatever or not being as happy as they could be, you know, remind them that, you know, remind them that what you mean to them, what they mean to you, right? So anyway, so great to be here. Love you all. Thanks a lot. Awesome, guys. Okay, well, we'll see you next week on the Saturday Morning Mass. Bye, bye for now.